Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Shri Manila. Today's topic is lateral periodontal cyst. What is lateral periodontal cyst? Lateral periodontal cyst originates from the epithelial dress in the periodontal ligament. It is a non-inflammatory cyst on the lateral surface of the root of a vital tooth. It is generally asymptomatic and presents as a round or oval or teardrop shape, uniform radiolucency with well-defined borders radiographically. Pathogenesis and Etiology From Dentigerous Cyst Initially, origin is thought to be arising from Dentigerous Cyst, which develops along the lateral surface of the crown. As tooth erupts, the cyst assumes a position in approximation to the lateral surface of the root. Proliferation of cell rests of malassage. Proliferation of cell rests of malassage in the periodontal ligament may lead to lateral periodontal cyst. But stimulus which causes this proliferation is unknown. Rests of dental lamina. Origin from proliferation and cystic transformation of rests of dental lamina, that is, in accordance with the usual small size of the cyst. Post functional dental lamina rests. Recent theory suggests that the lateral periodontal cysts and gingival cyst of adult share the common histogenesis from post-functional dental lamina rests. These two cysts represent basically the central or intraosseous and peripheral or extraosseous manifestations of same lesion. Types of lateral periodontal cyst. There are two types, inflammatory and developmental. Inflammatory. It occurs near alveolar crest. In this, pocket content may irritate and stimulate rests of malassage. Developmental. It is associated with developing tooth gem. Clinical features. Age and sex. Occurs in 5th and 6th decades. Occurs chiefly in adults with an age range from 22 to 85 years with a mean age of 50 years. It shows a male predilection. Site. The most frequent location of lateral periodontal cyst reported on lateral surface of the roots of the vital teeth in mandibular canine and premolar region and is followed by the anterior region of the maxilla. Symptoms. Gingival swelling may occur on the facial aspect and in such cases it must be differentiated from the gingival cyst. In gingival cyst, the overlying mucosa is blue but in lateral periodontal cyst, the overlying mucosa appears normal. When the cyst is located on the labial surface of the root, it appears as a slight obvious mass overlying the mucosa. Tooth. The associated tooth is vital. Infected cyst. If the cyst becomes infected, it may resemble a lateral periodontal abscess. Radiographic features The intrabony lateral periodontal cyst is seen as a round or ovoid or teardrop shape, well defined radiolucency with hyperostotic borders. Site it is usually found between the cervical margins and the apex of the adjacent root surfaces and may or may not be in contact with root surfaces. Size. Most of them are less than 1 cm in diameter, except the botryoid variety which may be larger and multilocular. Botryoid odontogenic cyst. It is a variation of lateral periodontal cyst. This term was proposed by Waldron, which refers to a multilocular periodontal cyst. It resembles a cluster of lateral periodontal cysts exhibiting some difference, that is, resembling a bunch of grapes. The lesion is multilocular with thin fibrous connective tissue septa. It is clear from the numerous reports of recurrence that the botryoid odontogenic cyst requires careful excision. Histopathology Thin non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium of 1 or 2 cell thickness. 
epithelial cells separated by intercellular fluid. Nuclei are small and pycnotic. Glycogen rich clear cells are seen. Thickened epithelium darkly staining fusiform basal cells are seen. Epithelial plaques bulge into cyst lumen. Some cells are of clear cytoplasm. Diagnosis Clinical diagnosis Normal color swelling seen in canine region. Radiological features Ovite shaped radiolucency seen between roots of the teeth with hyperostotic borders. Laboratory diagnosis It is lined by a layer of stratified squamous epithelium with connective tissue wall. Cuboidal and columnar cells may be found compassing the lining. The lumen of the cyst shows focal thickened plaque of proliferating lining cells. These are especially prominent in botryoid cyst. Differential diagnosis Lateral radicular cyst. In, la in radicular cyst, the lamina dura will not be intact and it is associated with pulpal infection and a non-vital tooth. Lateral periodontal abscess. It is very difficult to differentiate between abscess and cyst. But if it is less than 1.5 cm, then it is considered as an abscess. Lateral dentigerous cyst. It is generally associated with an impacted tooth, that is, third molars and canines. Residual cysts arising from the primary or permanent dentition. There will be a history of extraction of the tooth. Primordial cyst. If primordial cyst arising from supernumerary tooth, then it is superimposed on the adjacent root surface then it may be considered in differential diagnosis of lateral periodontal cyst. More common at anger age. So, to confirm the diagnosis of primordial cyst, radiographic examination from a different angulation should be carried out. Globulomaxillary cyst. It is seen in between maxillary lateral incisor and canine region. It is common in young age and appears as a pear-shaped radiolucency. Median mandibular cyst. It occurs in the midline of mandible. Now, let's learn about the treatment. Enucleation. Simple enucleation and allow bone to fill in on its own. This is the treatment of choice. Local excision. Locked excision is usually curative, especially important in botryoid type due to its high recurrence. Follow-up is suggested for the botryoid odontogenic cyst. This is also a treatment of choice. Advanced treatment. Use of a diode laser to shorten wound healing and guided tissue regeneration. Thank you everyone. Hope you all like the video. Please like, share and subscribe.